the Joe Rogan experience. Well, also Bernard developed this insane discipline while he was yeah, in prison. Yeah, the yeah, the yeah, hardships yeah. of prison were so awful. Yeah, the yeah. feeling of being locked up and contained that he fucked up his life. He was so bound and determined to become something special. I mean, he's so disciplined. Yeah. Well, even even beyond that, like he opened up his eyes and he looked at the landscape and he realized that most fighters are not disciplined. Most fighters they like the idea of being a champion. They like the idea of winning, you know, championships and what that brings. Not just the championships, but what the championships and the money brings. The the, the ladies, the you know, the party and all the stuff. And he said. I'm going to do it a different way. Like, these guys are out gaining weight, 20 pounds in between fights. I'm going to live like a Spartan. He under, he got the revelation, and he just stuck to it. Yeah, he ate clean. He, he lived a clean life. And he fought so disciplined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He fought so smart. He was one of the best defensive fighters ever. Just And people didn't like that style, man. He would pop you and grab you, pop you and grab yeah. you. And people would get frustrated. They would get out of composure, and they would start doing the things that maybe they shouldn't have done. And then he would capitalize on those things. I remember when he fought Trinidad, man. I mean, One of my that, that favorite was fights. woo. This Trinidad was a killer, and I love Tito. I do too. I mean, he was a killer. I got a chance to see Tito fight live in Vegas once. It was amazing. Mm. But when Bernard started putting it on him, I was like, "Wow, this is first of all, you, this is a, like a legitimate middleweight fighting guy who's really a welterweight, and this is also a really special fighter who just figures people out." He fought Tito in New York City in Madison Square Garden, which After. is which is little Puerto Rico. Yes, like uh, you know, I think it was the week of the the Puerto Rican yes. Day Parade. <laughs> yes, like and previously to that fight. In Puerto Rico, Bernard Hopkins took the Puerto Rican flag, threw it down, caused a melee, had to run out of there, get snatched out of the arena wherever they were having a press conference, get thrown on the plane. Like the the beef was real. Oh yeah. And uh, to be able to like like perform under that kind of pressure, unreal. One of my favorite fights. It's when he was running away from the crowd in Puerto it's Rico, crazy. and you realize like, oh my God, he's on his own here. Like literally, people are trying to kill him. But what what. What's even crazier is he knew that was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> like he knew, okay, this is getting ready to happen in three, two, one, threw the flag down and it was on. Oh, man. But it worked. First it worked. of all, it got so many people to pay attention to yeah. that fight. Yeah. And then two, it got, you know, it got Tito emotional. If he lost that fight, he was back to the back of the bus. If he wins the fight, which he did, he moves on to become greatness. Bernard Hopkins. Yeah. yeah, he moves on to greatness. You know, it's interesting when you watch his style as well, that very technical, very disciplined style versus Roy's style, which was so athletic and explosive and very unusual with that mm -hmm. lead left hook that mm -hmm. he would fire off more than a jab. Mm -hmm. I mean, Roy had a crazy style. Mm -hmm. And then when you watch Roy outpoint Bernard early, yep. but then Bernard comes back later in his career and really kind of like shut Roy down yeah. and showed like it, when the athleticism starts to slip away a little bit, Roy is normal. He's yeah. a human. He's a human. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Bernard was still this incredibly disciplined, very well schooled yeah. boxer. It was a real good lesson for fighters. Yeah. To see the deal, like this is why you use the fundamentals. This mm -hmm. is why you fight correctly. You mm -hmm. can get away with being Roy Jones mm -hmm. Jr., but Roy Jones Jr. with his physical gifts, I feel like he could have got away with fighting discipline mm -hmm. too. He could have got away with fighting technically, mm -hmm. but he, you know he just chose to fight his way. Mm -hmm. It worked for a long time. Oh, it worked yeah. until it didn't work. But yeah. it worked better than anybody. I mean, it was amazing to watch in the day when he was on top. Yeah. You know, when he was knocking out Virgil Hill with body shots and putting his hands behind his back and knocking dudes out. I mean, that he, was the guy I fell in love with, you know. But he could have, Roy could have, he could have gone and had a full career and rode off in the sunset and been in Pensacola fishing, hunting, doing whatever he does and still not really been super fundamentally sound. But, I mean, after he beat John Ruiz for the heavyweight championship of the world, um, uh, and I had been going to multiple Roy fights leading up to that heavyweight fight. Antonio Tarver, who I have a lot of respect for, you know, they were rivals in Florida when they were young. Um, Antonio was following Roy around, trying to get him to notice him, trying to get him to take a fight. And I remember clear as day in the post-fight press conference after Roy became the heavyweight champion of the world, after being the middleweight champion, starting at 160. Ter uh, Antonio Tarver interrupted the press conference he said, Roy Jones, you've been ducking me. You've been running. He's going on and on and on. Roy looks at Tarver and, and gives him the attention that he's been after. And he says, oh, oh, oh. he said, I I'm going to whoop you. I'm, I'm going to whoop you. We're going to make that fight happen. And at that moment, I'm thinking like, no, Roy, no, don't do it. You're the heavyweight champion of the world. Tarver was still light heavyweight. And sure enough, Roy went down. 
stripped off 25 pounds of muscle that he had built up with Mackie Shieldstone to get ready for the heavyweight fight. Went down there, fought a close fight, but he didn't look like himself. Took the rematch. Now, that, even after the first fight with Tarver, man, you run for the hills. You know what? I beat him. I wasn't myself. I'm going back up. Took the rematch and then got knocked out. Yeah, I didn't. I, that's weird. I thought the re, the first fight was earlier. Now my brain scrambled here because I thought that that was immediately after the Ruiz fight that he got knocked out. Yeah, it was. He he went back down. Yeah. So, so, so Ruiz, did, light heavyweight, went down, fought Tarver the first time, then fought the rematch, and then oh, got knocked out the so second time. So they fought time. two times in a row. They fought two times in a row, and oh, then they ended up fighting a third time, okay. like way down the road. Did they really? I didn't even know they fought a third, fought a third time. time in Florida. Yeah, the, the, the loss of the weight was a terrible idea. And Can't also, do that. let's be realistic about how we put that weight on. Is most likely there was some Mexican supplements involved, and if Man, you're going to put that kind of bulk on, you know, I mean, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm Roy Jones is one of my heroes. Listen, and there's not disrespect. No, I hear you, but, and and I've heard people say stuff like that, but like. I'm, that's my guy. I hear like, you. I'm a kid, so I'm like, no. I get like, it. I, don't I know. Believe it. You know, I get it. I, I'm believing that it was just Roy, Mackie Shieldstone, and hard work. I believe it is that. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. But I mean, what is he like? He was like 33, 34 at the he time. Was, he was somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah 34, very 35. Very hard to put 25 yeah. pounds of muscle on. Yeah. Very, well, it didn't re See, he cut weight to make the light heavyweight limit, right? So you got to think he was probably like 185, 190. 190, maybe. probably. Yeah. And so he really only gained maybe 10, 15 pounds. Pounds. Still, yeah. he was lean as fuck. Yeah, he was pretty lean. It's, he was it's thick hard. though too. Roy had a, yeah. Roy had that kind of build. Oh, he was country muscular. strong. Yeah, yeah, very muscular. I mean, he had crazy biceps and no triceps. Yeah, it was all just he whipping said, left no hooks. Tri it was weird, right? <laughs> he had a crazy body. I, I mean, didn't notice that, yet. dude. His his body was very unusual. The way he was built, like yeah. he was all biceps. It was just whipping. You know, he's just from whipping punches, whipping country body strong, shots. Man. Yeah, no, he was phenomenal. You got a picture of him, Jamie? <laughs> Yeah, oh, the TVs are off. Yeah, that's my guy. No, listen, I'm a gigantic Roy Jones mm -hmm. Jr. fan, but I mean, I feel like like that's there's one example right there. You see how gigantic his biceps mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. but you see it almost more while he's fighting. Mm -hmm. I mean, he really had like a body built to hook you. Yeah, yeah. What if Jones remained a heavyweight? I mean, look, he was so goddamn fast. As I mean, John Ruiz just was whiffing at air in that fight. Mostly. Well, the thing about the after the Ruiz fight is, <clears throat> you know, we had the same manager, uh, James Prince. There was a Tyson fight on the table. Uh, and I believe I'm accurate when I say this. It was somewhere around 40 million guaranteed. Whoa! There's an upside too. You stay at heavyweight, keep the weight on, and Tyson wasn't quite Tyson at that time. Right. Still dangerous, but wasn't quite Tyson. I think they were working toward it. From what I've heard, Roy wanted more money. James Prince was like, "Bro, take this 40 million. There's going to be an upside. It's you and Mike Tyson, Roy Jones and Mike Tyson." Roy somehow said, "Nope." The fight will be there later on down the road. Put his attention toward Antonio Tarver. The rest is history. Wow. I'm kind of glad he didn't fight Tyson. I wanted to see him fight Tyson and ride off in the sunset. <sighs> Uno mas. One more and we're out. Yeah, but he, I don't think he would have. I don't think Roy was ever really going to ride off in the sunset. He likes being so. Roy yeah. Jones Jr. He likes so to much. fight. Tyson Jones had 2003 fight card. 2002, is that what around when he fought Galata? They were supposed to start an HBO pay-per-view, and they were supposed to be the first fight on it. 